Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about process, my process and how I write code. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, how do you, what's your process for writing software? What steps do you go through when you're delivering code? And the short answer is that's a very hard question and I will try to answer it from one perspective and then let's just leave it at that. So the way that I usually write software, because since I work in web, most of what I do is as simple as, well, if we can call it simple, but let's, let's, let's call it simple. As simple as I have some interaction, if we're talking about full stack now, I have some interaction on a UI of some sort and that interaction ends up with a network request to a server of some sort and then that server needs to perform some type of business logic or something like that and the majority like 99.999% of the time when I deal with a feature such as this it's about persisting or getting something from a database storing and fetching information. And then when that is done, I return some type of payload to the client to assert that, oh, something changed or something updated, right? Usually that's what I do. If, in a simple case, there are more, well, there's a lot of cases where I do more sophisticated things than that as well. But I think that for, for, the, for this video of mine, that's going to be good enough. So. These are the, the factors or the, the blocks that needs to be addressed in order to finish this feature. So the first thing I always do, that's my, whenever there's a UI involved, is to build a UI first, always. The reason why I always do that is because it is through the UI that I know how the feature is supposed to work for the user. This helps me with understanding all the parts that needs to be in play on the server later on to actually create the, the experience that I want. That's one part of it. <clears throat> and the other part is that it helps me to deliver an MVP, which stands for minimum viable product. Now I try to always work in an MVP fashion and the way for most situations that means that starting at the UI is going to be the best choice. The reason is very simple because if I start working on one part of the UI and I st start working on one part of the server at the same time, well then the feature and the experience isn't really going to be, it's not going to be possible for me to ship one part of these two things because they're tied together and the, va the total value of the thing that I'm shipping is usually going to be lower depending of course on feature. But if I start with building the UI, even if I stop and mark off all the things within the UI, well then I can at, very, at the very least simulate the behavior that the person who's going to use the application wants. So even though everything is fake on the client because I don't really talk to the server until the UI is done, well then they will be able to kind of play around and feel feel around them um, uh, of they get a feel for how the thing is going to work when it's actually connected to the database the experience is going to be very similar almost identical to how the full fledged system is going to work and then when that is done i can actually give that experience or give that ui up for I can put that up for code review. I can send that over to my my stakeholder and say this is roughly how it's going to work. And what's powerful about that is that now while they're looking at that, I can continue on the server while the they have my stakeholders have the ability to review the work that has been done so far in a very easy to digest manner for them. It's almost impossible to do the same thing for a server unless your stakeholder is a another developer or someone with technical knowledge. UI, everybody can appreciate. UI is something that everybody can play around with and have an opinion on and see whether or not it works. The server is not the same story. So by just shipping that part first, I actually put myself up for less work and, and a situation where we can find issues faster. So once I have the UI, like, uh, what I usually do is literally, as I said, I create everything with fake data. If I have models or state or stuff like that in say React land, I create 
hooks and like all of the stuff, like everything I can express through state, I just use state for and everything that I need from the network. Well, I just kind of temporarily fake all of that data. And then before I move on to the server, I always declare my interfaces on the client side first. So since I really do love to work with TypeScript, the first thing I always do is to create interfaces for what my components are going to need in order to do the work that they're supposed to be doing. And by doing that, I get away from something that's very dangerous, which I see a lot of developers do these days. And that is that they don't really, they start in the reverse. They send raw data from the server to the client and then they force the client to pick out from a nested object structure of different values what the client needs in order to do the work and that creates a very bad coupling between the server and the client which is unnecessary and if you're working is at least from my opinion uh, in an MVC style you shouldn't be doing that you should be sending a view representation of your JSON, which is usually what you're sending over the wire, right? So by declaring the interfaces on the client side first, I actually now know what data the server needs to provide in order for the feature to work as intended. And that's very, very powerful because that way I'm doing a very similar sort of thing as what the server would do if you want to post information. Now the server isn't just going to allow you to post whatever data you want to the server. It's going to try to deserialize the information in the form or the Ajax or whatever you're doing right in the JSON and extract the information that it wants. And I do the same thing on the client. That way the client always has the exact amount of information in the right shape that it needs to do the job well. And that makes the client code really, really easy. So once I've declared and created the interface and I've declared my interfaces for what I need from the server, now it's time to go over to the server. And then I go over to the server and I create a outgoing model. It's the first thing. I always try to define my interfaces before I start writing any code whatsoever. The outgoing model is, as in MBC, just the view representation of the data that I want. And what that basically means is that I just create a a transient model, or not a transient model, but it's a short, it's just a visual, it's a DAO, a, da a data, no, a DTO, a data transfer object that will take in an arbitrary amount of data and just put, just put it in the shape that the client expects and then I send it over. And by doing so, I have decoupled my models that I store in my database and the data sources that I have from what I'm going to send to the client. Because if you just send raw persistent models like whatever you have in the database, well, then you have tied yourself in to, in some cases, you're going to send more information than you want. And in some cases, you're not going to be able to just get all the information that you need into from one set of entities that you have in the database. So by just doing this, I can just, all oh, right, well, I need to grab all of this data. It might come from other systems. It might come from my database. It doesn't really matter. So long as I get it in the shape that the client expects in my view, and I send that DTO over, then everything's fine. And after that, it comes down to just figuring out, okay, what do I have to create a new endpoint? Do I have to create some type of service layer or something like that where I can fetch data from the database. I need to figure out roughly what I need to do, right? If it's a very complicated feature or with a lot of intricate business logic or something like that, I usually start by just declaring a test for the stuff that I'm going to build. And then it comes down to implementing this controller function with usually, well, if you know about domain-driven design, which is something I think you should all be aware of if you have the chance to read, the, read that book. Well, then I apply these practices until I have a well-functioning business layer that knows how to execute the logic. And then finally, I persist or I do whatever I need with the database and then I send the payload back to the client. And that's pretty much the whole flow right there. So what I want you to take away from this is that at least when it comes to creating a feature, that has a view and some backend connection or something like that, I always start by writing the UI code, for code first and I finished up that with fake data and so forth. 
because that creates a situation where I can actually give that to some designer or some other stakeholder and they can play around with it and tell me if it's what they expect. And it also helps with understanding later on what is going to happen on the server. Then I declare my interfaces on the client so that I know what I need to get from the server. I do that before I go to the server and then I go to the server and I create an interface on the server side, which is a reflection of what I'm going to send over to the client. And then I populate that view model or the DTO with the information that I need and I put it in the shape that the client expects. So I never send more than I need to. And then it comes down to writing tests uh, or if you're working in a test driven fashion or at the very least just create a business abstraction within a controller function or something like that that knows how to get the right things from the database or save the right things to the database and then put everything in the view or the DTO and send that to the client. That's pretty much the whole process. And that's like 80, 90% of what I do as a web developer. Have a great day.